Venezuela's president wins a new term in the face of international condemnation. But can Nicolas Maduro use his next six years to salvage the country's economy? I'm Adnan Nawaz, and today's newsmaker is the Venezuelan election. Nicolas Maduro says he's not going anywhere after winning what he calls a truly popular victory in an impeccable electoral process. The election board's figures give the protégé of the late Hugo Chavez 67.7% of the vote, a far greater majority than five years ago when he barely scraped past 50%. The president's main rival, Henri Falcón, says widespread vote buying and other irregularities mean the result is illegitimate. Other critics, such as the banned opposition leader Enrique Capriles, have called for free and fair elections. While nearly a third of the country doesn't trust Maduro, what everyone wants is for him to regenerate the poverty-stricken economy. Sandra Gatsman reports from Caracas. Tengo el pelo completamente blanco. Voy a sacar juventud de mi pasado. Hugo Padrón is one of millions of Venezuelans struggling to survive in a country where the cost of living has become outrageous. But neither Hugo nor his friends were interested in voting. With an abstention rate of at least 55 percent, this was the most unpopular presidential election in Venezuela's history. Compared to other years, this voting center in a Caracas slum wasn't busy. Even a government militiaman told us the numbers were low. Just outside, loyalists of Nicolas Maduro tried to boost the turnout, offering free health checkups and a cash prize to government-issued ID card holders after they'd voted. A blatant attempt at bribing voters, according to the opposition. Maduro used every muscle to guarantee a second term, even deploying a dancing Maradona at his final rally. There are thousands of people here, and as far as we could see, most of them were bussed in from all over Venezuela. With Venezuela's economy collapsing under his watch, the incumbent president promised a turnaround. Sunday's vote was disputed from the start. It was called by the country's Constituent Assembly, which Maduro introduced last year, and has the power to overrule the opposition-dominated National Assembly. The country's popularly elected lawmakers are becoming even more powerless. Just a week before the election, the military banned journalists from the National Assembly. The deputies are trying to let us in, but the soldiers are blocking our way. Es un fraude, es una mentira. El único órgano legítimo que ejerce la soberanía popular es la Asamblea Nacional, electa por 14 millones de venezolanos. Y hoy no se quiere que los venezolanos sepan lo que estamos haciendo aquí para que haya democracia.
This election caught the opposition at its weakest. Their most popular leaders are in jail or in exile, and political parties were split over whether to vote or abstain. After last year's deadly street protest failed to bring down Maduro, the opposition lost momentum. Did you expect more people to arrive today? Not at all, not at all. We are conscious that uh, there, are, there is fear in, in, in the air. We're conscious that people uh, have wounds that were made last year and that still are very fresh. Uh, many people were injured, many people were in prison, and that's something that it's not easy to forget. We're trying to regain the confidence. Henry Falcon, a former ally of the late Hugo Chavez, had ignored the boycott. El segundo decreto liberamos breaking ranks with the opposition coalition to challenge Maduro. He's now crying foul and calling for a rematch. Para nosotros no hubo elecciones. Hay que hacer nuevas elecciones en Venezuela. So what now for a president whose mandate is based on only one quarter of eligible votes? Much of the international community has refused to recognize the results, and some in Venezuela are urging even tougher action. A criminal uh, trial for corruption against Maduro uh, to go ahead with stronger sanctions against um, those that have committed uh, severe violations to human rights and corruption, as well as their front men. And certainly I want uh, to see at the OAS, the Organization of American States, I want uh, the European Union to be supportive of those, uh, of the sanctions uh, that have been taken by other countries and then, and then move ahead in, in, in some more. Others worry that turning up the heat on Maduro might backfire. How is going to be the economy? Worse. And we are going to have a worse hyperinflation. And Maduro is going to be more repressive, which is what we are expecting now. Because in order to avoid any implosion or actions inside against him, he is going to be more and more radical. Maduro has promised to deepen his socialist revolution. And to his supporters, it means preserving the legacy of late leader Hugo Chavez. Though many others fear Venezuela is about to see an era of greater confrontation, isolation, and unprecedented misery. Sandra Gatman, The Newsmakers, Caracas.